Well, hey everybody, good morning. I think we're here, I think it's working. It's always hard to tell on these, but hey, there we go. Uh, welcome, glad you are here this morning. Hopefully this is working here, let me just make sure. Awesome, there we are, we got you here. Well, welcome, glad you are here this morning. Uh, my name is Tony, I'm the campus pastor at our Woodbury campus. Uh, so glad you are joining us this morning, no, no matter where you are. Uh, we are in day two of these devotions. We're going through the book of Colossians together, and I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be back together. Uh, this is going to be really fun to go through this, and so I hope you are enjoying them as well. Uh, today, the passage that we're going to look at is actually a prayer. Uh, it's Paul's prayer for this church at Colossae. And as I read this prayer, and as I was thinking about our, our time together today, it, it made me wonder if there's an important piece of prayer that we maybe sometimes pass over or sometimes miss. And if you're like me, prayer is often thanking God for certain things in my life, and then also you know, asking God to, to do things for me, which I think are both really important. Um, but here's what I was thinking. I wonder if it would be helpful for us to think about our, our prayer time as kind of like an outfitter. So, so here's what I mean. Uh, one of my first years in ministry, uh, about 17 years ago, I was a student pastor working with middle schoolers. And at the church that I was working at back then, they had a canoe trip at the Flambeau River in Wisconsin that they did every Sunday, or every, not every Sunday, every year. So this this canoe trip on the Flambeau River, now for a moment you might think, like, that sounds fun, a canoe trip, like, so fun, outside, canoeing, all those kinds of things, but here's what you need to know. Uh, this was a 45-mile a canoe trip with a bunch of middle school students. Uh, no offense, middle schoolers out there, but it was it was multiple days. We had to do, like, portages where we carried our canoes, we had to pack all of our clothes, all of our stuff, all of our tents, all of our food into these like waterproof blue container things. And then we had to carry those with us everywhere we went. We had rapids. I mean, this was intense. It was a whole deal. Uh, and it was extra difficult if you were one of the adults on the trip. Uh, I remember at one point uh, looking over and seeing kind of like all 25 canoes they're all kind of close to each other at this, you know, wide point of the river. And I look over at the other canoes and, you know, everybody's kind of, you know, paddling, you know, paddling kind of hard. And I'm in my canoe, I'm in the back, I'm paddling really hard. It's like, man, this just feels really difficult. And I look at the front of my canoe and my canoe partner up in the front, this sixth grade girl is sitting there with her canoe paddle resting gently on her lap as she looks around and just takes in the scenery without a care in the world. And here I am paddling in the back. Uh, this was an intense trip. Uh, it was a trip that we needed to prepare for. And so before we left for this trip, uh, we got outfitted. We stopped in and we got all the tools and supplies that we needed for our adventure. We got cooking utensils, canoes, tents, the waterproof containers, everything we needed. They set us up so that we were ready to go. So if you go on an adventure like that, if you go in the wilderness or the boundary waters or something like that, you're often going to go to an outfitter and they're going to give you all the tools and supplies that you need for that adventure. And so in the same way, I think prayer can be this moment where we come to God so that he can give us the tools and supplies that we need for the adventure ahead. And so with that, I want to take a look at our passage today and see how God can use it to prepare us for what he has in store for us. So it's the book of Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 9, and it says this. It says, so we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Uh, you ever feel like you could use some wisdom and understanding? Like what you're facing is so difficult or, or so confusing that you just love to be able to not have only your perspective, but to be actually able to see the, the situation from God's perspective as well. 
And Paul prays for that. And the fact that he prays for it, it means that, that God can actually give it to you. He can actually give you that kind of wisdom. Uh, then he continues into what that kind of spiritual wisdom can give you. Uh, verse 10, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. Uh, this is what happens when, you, uh, when God gives you that kind of spiritual wisdom. Your life starts to reflect it. You will produce good fruit in your life, and you will grow and learn and know God better and better. And what a great prayer for each of us. Maybe you've been following Jesus for a long time, or maybe you just made a decision to follow Jesus this weekend. Uh, whatever it is, we can all grow to know God better. Uh, verse 11. Uh, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so that you will have all the endurance and patience you need. Endurance and patience. Anybody need that right now in 2020? I mean, I can hardly think of anything that I need more than endurance and patience these days with distance learning and job uncertainty and when will there be a vaccine and holidays that are different than normal. I think we could all use a little patience and endurance these days. Uh, it continues. He says, may you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in, in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. What a great truth to give us in the midst of difficulty, that no matter what we face in 2020, we can be reminded that we have been rescued out of the kingdom of darkness and we've been given forgiveness and freedom. And maybe you needed to hear that today, that if you're a follower of Jesus, you have been rescued, you are forgiven, you've been set free. And so as we read this passage, I'm reminded of, of what Jason talked about this weekend, that God has a purpose for your life. He has, he has plans for you. And here's the thing about that. It's not just some sort of future purpose out there, like for someday later, like maybe someday I'll be able to discover my purpose and do it. God has a purpose for today for you. God has a purpose for this day. And if we're going to be ready for what God has set for us today, we're going to need to come to him and get every tool that we, that we need. We're going to be, need to be outfitted today. And in this passage we just read, I think there's three important tools that we need to live out our God-given purpose for today and for our lives. So the first tool is this, uh, spiritual wisdom. We need God's guidance for the day to discover what he has for us in every moment, to be able to see things from his perspective and not our own. This will help our lives to bear good fruit and we'll grow in our understanding of who God is and we'll grow closer to him as well. And I think it's important to remember that God's wisdom is not the same as the world's wisdom. And so we need to pray to receive that spiritual wisdom from him. The second tool is supernatural strength. We need God's power at work in us to give us endurance and strength to keep going. And here's what I found after years of walking with God. God often calls us to do things that we can't do on our own. I mean, we look at it and we think like, I can't do that. That's, that's not going to work. But he does that so that we have an opportunity to see his power at work and not our own. And I don't know about you but I want to see his power at work in my life. And so we pray to have God's strength and patience and endurance. And the third tool is joyful gratitude. Because life, life is not always easy, uh, especially these days, right? Uh, following God's purpose isn't always easy either. You know, sometimes we think that if we, if we follow God, if we're doing what God wants us to do, that everything will always be easy or that, you know, things are always going to work out. But that's, that's not true. Over and over again in the Bible, we see people who follow God's lead and things can be really challenging. And so we need God to remind us that we've been set free from our sin, that we've been given a relationship with God and that he is with us no matter what we go through. So spiritual wisdom, supernatural strength, and joyful gratitude. 
uh, for each of you today. Uh, here's what I hope you hear today. God has a purpose for your life. He has a purpose for this day. And before we close this morning, I, I want to take a moment to pray for you, to, to pray that God would give you all the tools that you need for the adventure ahead, that he would give you all the tools that you need for this day. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every person who's listening to this today. God, um, for each and every one of them, you have a purpose for their life. God, you have a purpose for this day. No matter what they feel, no matter you know what they think about their own lives, you have a, a plan designed for them. And so, God, I pray that today you would equip, equip them with every tool they need to accomplish what you've set out for them today. God, we pray for spiritual wisdom for them. God, would you help them to, to see things not from their own perspective, but from your perspective? To Would you lead them and guide them into whatever you want for them today? God, give them those spiritual nudgings that they need to, to do what you've called them to do. God, would you give them supernatural strength? Uh, God, it can be tough these days to get through, uh, get through the day and get through what you have for us. And so, God, would you give them your power at work in them? God, give patience and endurance to make it through whatever they're going through today. And God, would you give them joyful gratitude? God, when things are hard, when things are difficult, when things feel like it's just tough to make it through, God, would you remind them that you've rescued them? God, that you've brought them into your family. God, that you love them, you have a plan for them, and you are with them in everything they go through. So God, uh, for each of us, give spiritual wisdom, give supernatural strength, and give joyful gratitude. We pray all of it in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Actually, after this, you can, if you want to engage further in this, you can go to your campus Facebook groups, and uh, they're going to post this there along with some other questions for you to, to answer and engage with. Or if you are an online person, you can go to the online Facebook group as well. But uh, thanks for being here. I hope you all have a great day. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.